everyone and welcome to this day. Today is Wednesday, December 13th and I'm Bobby Higgins. Coming up on the show, we have the Projects Division Manager, Guy West, joining us here in the studio. He is going to give us a, a review on GRF's capital projects that all have been successfully completed this past year. And now let's take a look at today's Stay Informed. It is New Year's Eve at the Performing Arts Center and on De Sunday, December 31st at 7.30 p.m., several guest acts take the stage for a rocking fun night, which includes the famous ball drop to ring in the new year. Get your tickets now. They start at $35. You can get your tickets at the PAX box box office or log on to tickets.lagunawoodsvillage.com. And now let's take a look at our weather. Today it's going to be breezy with plenty of sunshine. The high is 68 and the low is 47. Tomorrow on Thursday it'll be sunny, breezy and pleasant with a high of 72 and a low of 49. On Friday and through the weekend it's mostly sunny and pleasant with highs in the low to mid 70s. And looking at your sunrise and sunset for today, this photo is the holiday ornaments at Costa del Sol Heritage Garden in Mission Viejo. Your sunrise was at 6.47 this morning and sunset will be at 4.44 p.m. tonight. If you would like to have your photos featured here on this day, please email them to us at lagunawoodsvillagetv at gmail.com. Stay with us. We have GRF's Capital Projects coming up after the break. But first, let's take a look at today's meetings. Pet boarding and daycare reimagined in Laguna Woods. Smart Park is offering one month of unlimited free daycare to new clients that pass a temperament evaluation. Call today to redeem this offer and get started. By staying home, the community of Orange County has made a difference. But doing so shouldn't mean putting your own health at risk. Hope wants you to know that safe, quality care is available. Don't ignore or delay the medical attention you need. From routine checkups to revolutionary treatments, Hogue is here for you, just as we have been for almost 70 years. Like no other time before, your healthcare choices matter. Get the care you need from the name you trust. Hi. Welcome to Pacific Financial Planners. We focus on income replacement for your retirement. We have over three decades of professional money management experience. We personalize a plan that's right for you and your family. You only get one shot at retirement. Don't you think you better get it right? So give us a call for your free consultation. We can do this over the phone, via Zoom, or in person. Dr. Farhumand and her associates at Brilliant Smile are excited to announce we now feature cone beam computed tomography. CBCT scans have many benefits over traditional x-rays. They are fast, safe, non-invasive, and provide better care to our patients. The 3D images provide an accurate view of teeth, bones, and soft tissue. It allows us to diagnose and treat more effectively. Also, it features modern diagnosing of sleep apnea by checking the airways and obstructions. Get started today. Call Brilliant Smile, Laguna Woods Village favorite dentist. Welcome back to this day. Joining me now is Guy West, the, the Projects Division Managers with VMS. And it's so nice to meet you and have you here on the show. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you. Yeah. It's and nice to meet you as well. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> so it seems like there's always something that, you know, needs repair or remodeling around here. And, um, and you guys have actually achieved quite a bit in this past year, some big, big projects. Um, and uh, so first off, the Aliso Creek Trail Paving, uh, this is one of the projects that was completed. Tell me about this. Where was, where was this at exactly? Like, what do people use this trail for? So it, it's a great amenity for the community. It's like a nature walk. 
because on one side of the trail is the creek, and in the creek you can see wildlife like uh, turtles, fish. And the times that I was out there to do inspections, you know, I, I thought it was a great amenity for this community. And so, um, as you can see on the screen, um, you know, there's some wear over time. It's frequently used, it's used every day. You can go out there right now and you'll see people walking on the trail. And so, um, as a part of this project, we wanted to make sure that it's safe. You know, safety is always a concern. Um, and um, so we did what we call an overlay. Uh, where we take uh, asphalt paving and we go over the existing asphalt paving. It's about a two inch lift. It gives it a nice smooth surface. And so um, now the, the uh, residents can walk on that trail and feel safe and it's smooth and it just makes it nicer. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It look, definitely looks nice. And so do people ride bicycles too as well or other wheeled things or is it mostly just walkers? I've my experience has just been walkers. So um, if there are uh, bikers on that trail, I'm unaware. Okay. And so this, would, like how long was this closed when they repaved it this was area? A day, it was one day. a day, one yeah. day. We, we closed it down for a day. We uh, offered some other access points. Uh, a lot of people access this from uh, Avenida Sevilla. Uh, they park on the street there and they access uh, the trail at that point. Um, this trail, this particular trail happens to go down to the bridge um, and that's where, not the trail ends, but this section of paving that we worked on was about 8,000 uh, square feet. Okay. So, and now is this whole, is there any other areas near here that are going to need remodeling as well or is that, that completes this area? No, for this area, that will complete that area. We've taken care of the issues that were, uh, they were all addressed in okay. this project. Wonderful. And next, I know this one was really important to the community, the golf driving range. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it, this one gets a lot of use. It's a 10 acre site. Um, and, you know, so people out there practicing their swing, uh, they do bring some pros over and there's a training area where they can train. Uh, and uh, get some advice on, on their swing. Um, so, you know, just looking at the, the, the picture that's up there, it was, it was in pretty bad shape. Um, there was a lot of erosion. Um, you know, if there was a, a rain event, it would turn to mud. They would have to shut the facility down until it could dry out because it wasn't safe for staff to get out there and work on it. So, um, wow it had to be rehabilitated. And that was really what the focus was, was to make sure that uh, we can plant turf and that it would grow um, and root. And of course, there's the, the final product. And, and so now it's a, it's a safer, it's safe for the workers that are out there picking up the balls and doing the maintenance. And it's a much more pleasant experience for the user. Yeah, definitely beautiful. And, and this was a project that did it, it was closed in March, um, so it was closed for several months, but it was something that was in the process for a long time to get this project completed. There, were there, were there yeah. challenges with this one? Um, yeah, during the planning stages, I think there were a lot of different ideas that were thrown into the mix, and um, you know, all of that had to be vetted, and the project had to get approval from the board. And once the board determined uh, how they wanted to move forward, uh, they turned it over to staff. We, uh, um, we retained a, a contractor, a landscape contractor with experience in this type of uh, uh, turf. And they, uh, they spent a lot of time amending the soil because it had been uh, left to erode for so long. All the minerals and the things that would help the grass to grow needed to be put back into the soil. Okay. So there were analysis done on the soil, testing done. Uh, to determine what needed to, what amendments needed to be added. And so that was done. Um, the, the grass was planted. We had some difficulty along the way. Um, the, the topography, uh, there's a lot of slope, so it's hard to grow grass on slope. I don't know if anyone's had that experience. But so, you know, we, we worked through all that. The, the contractor came through. They planted some sod in the areas that were having difficulties. 
and um, it worked out fine, and we were able to open. Uh, we did predict a November opening, and that's when we were able to open. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy to think who knew how, how difficult that all that would be to all these things you don't realize that it takes. And, and so when you had the first bids and you had things in there and maybe you took some things out of the bids, is there anything now that it's completed that you go, oh, man, wish we had added a certain, kept that certain other thing in the bid? Or are you perfectly happy with no, the, the results, um, this, this outcome is what we were looking for. We were looking for an even turf uh, throughout. Um, you know, there was thoughts of maybe leveling it off because it is on a slope, um, but the expense just didn't make sense. And I agree with that. You know, it, it would have been uh, more money than, you know, it, was, it would be worth. I think the, the playing experience or the, the, the experience that the users have is a good one now. Their balls will now end up where they should end up because the grass slows that roll down. Yeah. And before, they, it was like concrete. They would all just wow. roll to one side. <laughs> so I think the experience is much better. Yeah, I'm sure the residents are just thrilled with how it's turned out. It is definitely beautiful. Um, so your next project, Shepherd's Crook Installation, um, and so when I first heard this name, I wasn't familiar with this area. I'm like, this sounds like a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Could so, be. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this area. Where is this? What, what was done with this area? Um, so a lot of this community where there are block walls, they installed barbed wire. It's, it's a security type fencing that goes on. Um, you see it in a lot of places. Unfortunately, uh, this uh, community was built uh, when it was still county, and then uh, they incorporated the city of Laguna Woods at some point. Um, the city of Laguna Woods does not allow barbed wire to be installed on top of these block walls. So we had to come up with a, a new system, uh, one replacing the barbed wire. And, and so um, we worked with the city, and the board finally approved the Shepherd's Crook as a, a replacement for the bar, barbed wire. Um, I'm happy to say that you know GRF is fully completed. This year was the last section of uh, barbed wire that was being replaced with Shepherd's Crook. That was all done around Gate Three area. It was uh, we started, I believe, in 2020 uh, on this project for GRF, and again, it was completed about. Uh, 1,900 linear feet of uh, Shepherd's Crook was installed. Oh, wow. Wow. So, yeah, so that's taken a few years then to get that all done. Yeah. That was a big job. And so, um, okay, and then your next uh, area is the Equestrian Center Hay Barn Siding and Store Doll Painting. So, um, you know, tell me, tell me what, what was wrong, what was going on with that area? Okay. So with the um, Equestrian Center, the... the they have 48 stalls in a, in a barn there to house the, the horses. Um, as you can see in the, in the slide here, the, they do a lot of, there's a lot of abuse that happens to these doors and the trim around the doors. The horses, they, they like to chew, <laughs> what can I say? And so, um, you know, it, it was looking um, pretty bad. Um, there was some damage that was done. And so we went in and we repaired the wood, we um, painted the doors, and then we added this uh, rubber padding to the interior, the lower panel. Um, it seemed to take a lot of abuse, so this is gonna help out um, in the future. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, D deter the horses from any uh, kicking or chewing. <laughs> well, if they do kick it, you know, the padding takes the brunt. Right, right. Yeah, hopefully that'll that'll help. So, oh, and then I, I assume uh, no horses were harmed in <laughs> No, this was, uh, so we had to phase this, and we were doing sections at a time, and the horses would be removed as we, we performed the work, um, and then they would be brought back in, in the evening, and we lose, used a very low... Um, uh, well, the paint, the paint that was used was safer for animals. We made sure that we found a paint that would be safer for oh, the animals. Oh, good. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a VOC low rating. Yes, yeah. Oh, I'd love to hear that. That's great. Um, and then lastly, the clubhouse parking lot and street paving. This, we all know, you know, what a pain it is to, you know, as a resident to have to deal with that. But it's so nice once it's finally finished. It is. Um, so... Every year we, we do a rating 
um, on the streets throughout the community and uh, in all of the mutuals, but in particular, GRF this year um, received uh, paving um, on 216,000 square feet of paving. Um, and it's the same thing, it was an overlay type painting, or paving, but what we do in this case is we grind down the top layer of the surface and then they add two inch layer on top of that and it's smoothed out. And this is the process you can see um, on these slides. There's a, there's a lot of work that goes into um, the streets and the streets are well maintained throughout the community. It's one of your largest assets. In GRF alone, you have uh, 38 miles of road that's paved. Wow. That is maintained by uh, staff. So um, it's a big undertaking. Uh, it is a lot of work. But I think uh, overall, the streets in this community are better than in most uh, communities that you find. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's so nice when you're driving through not to be uh, hitting potholes and bumping yes. all around. <laughs> and, and if there is a, a pothole, it's addressed immediately by the, our staff, the VMS staff. They also have a crew that will go out and take care of the small uh, potholes if they develop. Okay. And so they're on it right away. They do keep uh, the streets maintained very well. That's great. And so, so you said there was 38 miles of streets in here? <laughs> yeah. So, so, how, so it must go in stages. For GRF. For GRF. 38 miles okay. for GRF. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So yeah. is it like it takes three years to get all that done and then every 10 years needs to be redone? Or, or how does like the timing on all that happens? So um, typically your asphalt in Southern California um, is about 20 to 30 year life cycle. Um, but the, the community, um, is, you know, the boards here, um, they do a good job because we have a proactive maintenance program as well. So that extends the life. So we're looking at a good 30 years before we have to do this, this type of work, which you see uh, oh, okay. on the screen. Um, they do a lot of seal coat and that seal coat puts the moisture, or not the moisture, but oils back into the asphalt and keeps it from cracking. And when that happens, if a crack happens and it goes down to the subsurface, then you can have problems and it costs more money uh, to repair. So they do an excellent job with their roads here. Yeah, maintenance is always best. Prevention, right? Yes, prevention. <laughs> what are uh, any other current projects that you have getting ready to start up or any plans for next year? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, probably for GRF, we, I, I believe we have like 27 uh, projects lined up for wow. uh, 2024. Um, we are in the middle of some of the projects that we started in 2023, but we haven't completed yet. Um, you know, right now we're working on uh, the broadband, uh, replacing the HVAC, because that's where the servers are stored, and it's, it's important to maintain that uh, climate in there. And those, uh, the system that's in there now is, is pretty old, and they've had many uh, calls to come out and uh, do repairs. So this it was time to replace HVAC? it. Yeah, and for this the is HVAC. where? It's at the broadband, oh, and okay. that's over at the, the service center uh, where staff uh, yeah. has all their operations. Um, so that's just one. We're in the middle of replacing those units. We have uh, the, we're also replacing or we're adding gates at the equestrian center uh, for security purposes. Um, they had uh, complaints where um, people would just walk in from the street and they had access to the horses. Oh, wow. It's yeah, that's not, not a good. safe environment. So we're putting up uh, security fencing and, and gates. Um, and now only those who uh, uh, need to have access will have access. Perfect. Nice. And any other things that you, you know, wanted to tell us about or... Any other plans? <laughs> no, we're, we're just, you know, we're, we're excited about the projects that are coming our way. We're, we're also in the process of uh, Clubhouse One. We're doing a, a beautification. We're updating a lot of the spaces there. So um, that's in, still in the planning stages. We, we need to get uh, our drawings, our engineering done. We need to get permits. And so that's uh, you know slated to start uh, the first quarter of, of next year. And so, so will that hopefully be completed during next year? So 
If, if the plan uh, moves forward the way it's looking, um, we're looking at a 24-week construction uh, for that facility. Um, if they do it in a single phase. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that a, a conclusion has been uh, made uh, as far as how they're going to phase that project, but right now it's looking like uh, a single phase at 24 weeks. Okay, all right, well great. Well, thank you so much for being here and, and updating us with all this information. Oh, I'm happy to, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Stay with us. We have the weekend, this weekend's movie previews and announcements coming up right after this. Calling all Barrett heads and land lovers to flock to the Performing Arts Center to get their tickets to Jimmy's Buffet, January 18th. The Boomers Club is thrilled to bring the number one Jimmy Buffett band on the west coast to Laguna Woods. Jimmy's Buffet is a wildly fun show celebrating the music and vibes of the man himself. It'll be all Hawaiian shirts and salt shakers as the band plays Buffett's hits among dancing sharks, tiki towers, and palm trees. The crowd will hear all the classics and new hits. The awesome seven-piece band features steel drums, congas, keyboards, and four-part Caribbean harmonies. And crowd participation is the hallmark of the show. Don't miss Jimmy's Buffet. Joint care is so exceptional, you'll wish you'd done it sooner. At Memorial Care, we're voted high in patient satisfaction for a reason. Our specialized surgeons and care teams understand the pain you're going through, as well as the best personalized treatment to get you back to what you love sooner. With nationally recognized care, advanced technology like our Precision Mako surgical system, and support that's always by your side. Get ready to go forth with renewed joy. A new movement awaits at Memorial Care Orthopedic and Spine Institute. I found my way uh, to Barrel Institute uh, through my optometrist. Uh, he diagnosed me with a retinitis pigmentosa and gave me a referral to Braille. It's actually made a huge difference in my life. Each class gave you, or gave me, um, a certain type of independence, whether it's taking a bus. I never took a bus before. I always used to drive. So it gave me the independence of getting out of my community, taking the bus and getting to the market and back. The computer class, once again, I had to relearn my computer skills. Cooking, cooking was a, is an issue. The stove could get dangerous. So they teach us other ways of cooking. That, that just falls back on being independent again. If I came across somebody who needed Braille's help, to get their independence, I would actually let them know what it did for me. Um, Braille, like I said, gave me back my independence. Braille Institute also has what, what they call low vision specialists, and they introduce you into to, uh, devices such as handheld magnifiers, which are really great for on the go. Computer programs such as Zoom Text, I owe everything to Braille, getting my independence back learning how to get around. I had people skills, but, but Braille Institute showed me as a visually impaired person, you can still do it. People, when they become visually impaired, they want to stay in a box and they don't want to leave their homes. They don't, they're afraid to go back to work. You can't do that. You got to get out the box, step out the door and go to a place like Braille Institute so you can give yourself uh, a peace of mind. You can still live a full life. Don't let your vision impairment slow you down. All programs are offered at no charge thanks to the generous support of our donors. For more information about the broad range of free programs and services offered by Braille Institute, call 1-800-BRAILLE or visit brailleinstitute.org. Did you know that the Laguna Hills Lodge was originally built as a place for relatives or friends to stay when they were visiting? In 1968, Laguna Woods' residents built the first two buildings of the lodge because they wanted a place close by for visitors to stay. Since then, the lodge has become the spare bedroom for the Laguna Woods' residents. The lodge has received the TripAdvisor Award of Excellence eight years in a row. We invite you to stay in one of our recently remodeled garden rooms and take advantage of a special offer for Laguna Woods' residents, family, and friends.
Welcome back to this day. Let's take a look at this weekend's upcoming movies. Friday's movie is The Great Train Robbery, starring Sean Connery and Donald Sutherland. This is being brought to you by Pacific Financial Planners. Set in England during the 1850s, a master criminal aims to rob a train of a large sum of gold. Security is incredibly tight and the task seems an impossible one. However, he has a plan and just the right people to carry it out. Saturday's movie is The Journey, a musical special from Andrew Bocelli and is being brought to you by Radnet. Merging world-class music with intimate conversations in the awe-inspiring Italian countryside, The Journey is an exploration of the moments that define us, the songs that inspire us, and the relationships that connect us to what matters. And now let's take a look at some announcements and events happening here in the village. The Emeritus Institute presents Word of Mouth, an engaging hour of interpretive readings from Shakespeare, Longfellow, Yeats, and more. The event is this Thursday, December 14th at 3 p.m. at the Norman P. Murray Center in Mission Viejo. And don't miss this delightful village holiday event, Santa Paws at the Equestrian Center that is being held this Saturday, December 16th from 1 to 3 p.m. Come bring your pets in for a fun photo op with Santa, Third Mutual's first vice president, Jim Cook. Make sure to bring your smartphone and the staff will take a photo with your device. And tickets are on sale now for the holiday classic, The Nutcracker at Irvine Barclay Theater. The show is running December 9th through the 24th. Get your tickets today at festivalballet.org or call 949-854-4646. And now taking a look at the weather, today is breezy and with plenty of sunshine. High is 68, low 47. Tomorrow on Thursday, it'll be sunny, breezy, and pleasant. And on Friday and through the weekend, it's mostly sunny and pleasant with highs in the low to mid 70s. Taking a look ahead tomorrow on this day, we have the GRF update with Juanita Skillman. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can catch this day again at 12.30 and 5 p.m. or you can catch it anytime on demand on Village Television's YouTube channel. For this day, I'm Bobby Higgins. Have a great day, everyone. So one of the important things to note, the main difference between male and female breast cancer, is the time of presentation for men. Stage for stage, the diseases are the same. However, if you present later, there's a greater risk that the disease will spread. So one of the most important things I tell all my patients, but especially my male patients, is that as soon as you notice the lump, you need to present to your physician for further evaluation.